Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We worship you, Lord. We adore you, Lord Jesus. Be glorified in our midst. Be magnified in our midst. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Please be seated. We want to pray. Um, interestingly, I'll still be taking the same prayer point I took last Sunday and the upper Sunday, but I'll be adding one to it to make four prayer points. I've been taking three prayer points in the last um, one month or so that you move forward in life, that whatever is lacking in your faith, God will intervene, and that whatever your resources are, They'll be untied and brought to your bands. Amen. We're adding one as we're praying for the leadership of the church in Nigeria. Um, I'll take it from where the minister took the Bible reading and said a musician was sought to play for the king. And the looked out for five requirements just to play for the king. Not to talk to the king the word of God and what he should do. No, 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 not that. Just to sing, to appeal to his soul. That's all. There's a minister that could talk to the king and say, this is what the books write about you. This is what the book says in your time must be done. That's different. The demands of that will be higher. But they asked for five things, including prudence. A man discreet in utterances, because he will see some private things that must not come into the public glare. They don't want a loud talker just to sing. In Acts chapter 6, there was a slight challenge in the church about distribution of food. Just, we want to pray for the leadership of the church. My prayer is that God will intervene in the soul of the Christians in Nigeria. Amen. So that they will not behave like darkness. In Acts 6, I'm passionate about this. Because the church is not moving forward. And it's part of what is affecting the nation. They said the number of disciples was multiplied and there was a murmuring of the Grecians against the Jews because their widows were neglected in daily ministration of food. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples to them and said, it is not right that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. So they're looking for who will serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men, people to serve food. A one honest report. Two, full of the Holy Ghost. And three, wisdom, to serve food. If that is to serve food, then which, what's the qualities of those that will lead us? Because they can lead us into darkness and the church will perish. If this is required to serve food, then the church in Nigeria has entered enter second chance. In, I think, Acts 5 or so, is Acts 5 or 4, when Peter and James were arrested, they said, grant to us, O oh God, boldness. So the leadership of the church must be bold. Ready to confront, if need be, the government for the sake of the church. Not sitting in their room and praying that one president should die. No, 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 no. They didn't pray that Herod should die now. They didn't pray Herod should die. So the praying that the president should die is actually, of course, <laughs> after you set to establish him, you are praying he should die. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> um, I am not a fan 
of the Cardinal State Governor, Alam Nasser El Rufa. I'm not a fan of his. But there's some leadership qualities I find in him. I want us to pray for the church. Since the inception of this administration, kidnapping has become a norm. It is normal. And I can tell you, kidnappers are smiling all the way to the bank and being encouraged to continue kidnapping to do, um, through ransom payments. Some students were kidnapped in Cardinal State recently, and the kidnapper said, we want to negotiate with the state government because what we want is from the state government. I'm quoting from newspaper review on channels television, so it's not online news. No, it's this, I saw it on Nigerian television. And the governor said he will not negotiate with terrorists. In fact, he says, no state has a policy now. We will not negotiate with terrorists. And he went on to say, even if his own son is kidnapped, he will not pay a dime as ransom. He will rather let him die. Then the terrorists, seeing they cannot collect from Cardinal State government, change their style and ask the parents of the kidnapped children to come and pay ransom so that they don't lose outright. He said, we'll sit down and wait and see what happens. Whether it will go right or left, then we'll know what to do. So for once, a man stabbed the terrorists to their face and they didn't know what to do because they expected the norm from all the other leaders to continue. And I asked myself, though I'm not a fan of this man, we should draw inspiration from his audacious behavior. We need that quality in the leadership of the church. Are you all aware that there's a policy of this government that Christians must pay to get married, 15,000, and Muslims and other religions do not pay? And what did our leader say? They said they condemned that statement, and that was all. <laughs> I want us to pray for bold, pragmatic, wise, intelligent leadership that can project ahead, see what is coming, and know how to steer the body to overcome and advance the challenges of our times. I'm not sure you know what I'm saying. Those who are to serve them will need wisdom. They must be full of the Holy Ghost. Ask myself, how did the leadership of the church endorse a government like this? Did he design what was in his mind? Were you not full of the Holy Ghost to know what this man was planning? That all his plan is a Sharia, not any economic program. He gave you a dummy because you were not full of the Holy Ghost and you bought it. And people who are to serve tables must be full of the Holy Ghost. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. You know, the way they lead you, Jesus said, I'll build my church, the gates of hell must not prevail. Meaning they must lead you in such a way the gates of hell must not prevail. If they lead you for the gate of hell to prevail, one of two things will happen. God will either take away that leadership because his word must not fall to the ground or take away the followership. One of the two will have to go. Otherwise, he is a liar. Jesus has lied and his word has fallen to the ground. The way the church is going to be stead, it's stead into the pits of hell right now. It's stead. We have been boxed. We have been gagged. Is it not Quara State that said even Christian schools, the ladies should wear hijab? What has the leadership done about it? What have they done? If an aerofire was in a can, that will not stand. He will not. It will, they won't even try it. Because they know they can't predict what he will do. <laughs> the educational state of Quara State, I don't believe can match Lagos State. I believe the governor should be thinking of upgrading the laboratories. Building libraries, right? Renovating the classroom. His priority is hijab. <laughs> and Christians voted for such a man. Let's leave it. Let's face the leadership of the church. 
that the Lord give us men who will inspire us, who will navigate us, not into a pit, but navigate us through the crisis unscratched and bring us into that wealthy place in the name of Jesus. Give us a new set of leaders. Do you know one of the greatest leaders of the church worldwide was interpreting the Bible and said, Christians are to endure hardness like a soldier. You know how he interpreted it? He said, Christians should not get involved in politics. <laughs> I said, something is wrong. God probably has turned his back on this man. Even a newborn of secondary school, a Christian, will interpret that scripture better. How can a man with such miracle lay, following him make such a statement that a secondary school student will not make that he's a Christian? What is this? What is this? What is this? We're in trouble. Leave the jihadists. We're in trouble. We're being led into a pit. He says, the blind leading the blind. And so I want us to pray, God, give us a new set of leadership that will lead the church. The church is not in a time of peace. The church is in a time of war. Maybe you think the church is in a time of peace. The church is in a time of war. <laughs> they all think they're in a time of peace. It's in a time of war. And people who will have strategy, like David, in a time of war to conquer and excel and overcome and cause the church to advance towards Zion. Father, give us such leaders. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray. Let me hear you pray. Let me hear you pray. Ekaliba kataya mandele kebo kozodo. Magata kataka chukulima katata. Orobondo lobo kozeketia. Kandeli kabu sakrade kashkuria makatata. Ebrende le kebo kototo. Niyaka yaka 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 chokuria katata. Mokolomondo lobo kote. Akiliba kasande li kabo toto. Iyaka la mandele boko zuvrodo kozia katata. Elima kasodo. Kura bakatata libo kose, krendele kebu sama katata, kuromondo lo kose, kuromondo lo bo kosea, ikaya bakata ya bakata ya bakande, naga gaga gaga bo 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 kose, naga gaga gaga jaga libo kote, mokolo monde, kula makasede, krede kusufra kataya mande, kali bo kose krede keziva katata, kolo mondo lo bo kose. In Jesus' name. We're still praying. I said again, and I'm repeating, I'm not a fan of Mansur El Rufa. I'm not his fan. But I admire that leadership quality in him. After I refused to negotiate with terrorists, a pastor was kidnapped by Boko Haram and another pastor, a leader in the church. We need leaders who don't count the grace of God by jets, but the ability to pick what is in the heart of God, in the mind of God, take that light and show it to the church. He was begging Boko Haram not to kill the pastor. <laughs> Any Christian that's kidnapped now under that man is in trouble. I thought he would say, the money you asked for, we're leaving this man to Jesus. If Jesus chooses to save him, so be it. If Jesus chooses not, may heaven receive his soul in peace. The money you ask for will times seven it. We'll give it to his wife and children. Then I personally, I give his firstborn scholarship to school abroad. We'll ask five, if he has five children, we've asked five churches to give each of his children scholarship abroad. Kill him! We're waiting. Can't leave. Now, if you kill him, it's a plus. If you leave him, it's a minus. Where do they turn to? You kill him. All the children are going on scholarship abroad. Sponsored. You spare him. Or you lose. Either way they turn, it's a loss. That's what I expected. But you don't beg them. <laughs> I am a kata. Say, no, he's going to heaven. It's not going to where they will give virgins to be sleeping with. In our own heaven, we're like angels. There's no male, no female. There's no wine to be drinking. Do you have the 
In our belly is the well of life springing to everlasting life where he will glow in eternal peace that transcends human understanding. Kill him! His wife and children will not suffer one. What if he walks till he dies? What he cannot attain, we will give to him. And if you spare him, shame on you. Where do you turn to? Let's ask for boldness. For those, not for the church leaders, for those coming that God will put in the front to steer the church. Boldness. Boldness. Audacity. Wisdom. Courage. It takes to Joshua. Be of good courage. You're going to lead these people in terrain that when you look, your heart will melt. But listen, be courageous. For I, the Lord thy God, I am with thee. Go! And the people said, Joshua, be of good courage, for we are with you, and your Lord thy God is with thee, Kalibu. Not, hey, let's be, let's leave it. Say after me, say, Heavenly Father, the new crop you are raising, that will stir the church into glory, give them strength, courage, boldness to march ahead in the face of satanic and mountainous opposition to stir the body in the light into Zion in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Kalivo Zubra Kataya Mandi Ele Kaboto Sokaya Makate Mande Leboko Sufrodo Kotaya Mandi Ebrede Keliba Kasakataya Mande Korobondo Loboko Zia Elemo Loboko Ya Makaya Bakatata Men like Peter who may have neither silver nor gold but have what it takes to shake governments Kalima su kataya mande Kalebo ko su prakataya mande lekebo su katata Kia mande lekete Kura bakataya bakasa kataya boko roboko ko zekede Kalemo toy Kasha kataya mande Krede kebo su prakatata Ande lebo ko zikatata Egiriba kataya mande Korobondo lobo ko zia Korobondo lobo ko zia Kerebondo lobo ko hia in Jesus' name we have prayed. He will not leave his church. That's the only investment he has on earth. And the church can't be better than the leadership it has. Jesus asked his own disciple, Philip, there's a crisis here. He said, what is it, sir? He said, these people have been with me for three days. Over 5,000 men beside women and children. And they are hungry. I can't send them. They will faint on the way. I need to feed them. That's a crisis. So he asked one of his leaders, what do we do? See the answer he gave. He said 300 penny worth of food cannot satisfy these people. Did he even suggest moving forward at all? No. Actually, he retrogressed the move backwards. That's a leader in the church. <laughs> and he asked a lawyer who is not in the church which is the greatest commandment. He said, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy strength, he said, is number one. And to love your neighbor as yourself is better than all the burnt offerings put together. But I was like, Jesus seeing, he answered discreetly. He said, you are close to the kingdom. That's a heathen. Then he now said, the children of this world are more intelligent than even their leaders in the light. So you understand why I say pray. In 1 Thessalonians 3, verse 10, we've been praying this prayer for about a month. It says that night and day, so we can keep praying it. Praying exceedingly that we might see your face and that God may perfect what is lacking in your faith. That God may perfect... <coughs> What is lacking in your faith? We understand you have sown sacrificially. We understand you are committed to the service of the Lord. We understand you are confessing the word. But yet, there's something not working. 
What is needful? And, and I give you an example. Job said after he lost all his property, he said, I know my Redeemer liveth. That is fair. Trust in God. Yet nothing worked. At another time, Job said, in Job 14, if a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time. He said, I will wait till my change comes, for I know my change will come. Change did not come. He said, at the scent of water, a tree be cut down, it will grow again. You are correct, but there is no change, Job. There is still no change. He said, if you give me in the grave, I die. And you give me only one option of one request, I will ask. And the only thing is that I know my God live here. I want us to be raised up. I will only say that I know my Redeemer. How more do you want to trust God? Yet, nothing worked. God even testified of the patience of Job. Yet, nothing worked. That means something was lacking in his operation. That as a man of the spirit, confessing, believing, sowing, Still, nothing has happened. The Bible says in Job 42, verse 10. And the Lord. Not when he said, I know my Redeemer liveth. No. Which is trust in God. Hope. Saying if a tree can be quite and grow, he said, I will get back. Yet, the Lord didn't turn his captivity around. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he did what? Pray for whom? His miserable counsel of friends. That was what was lacking in his faith. The people that despised him, that abused him, that betrayed him, Job trusted God. That's 1 Thessalonians 3.10. You trust God. You are walking in the spirit. You are not living in sin. Everything is good, but nothing is working. He said to Gaius, he said, oh, Gaius, I pray. That thou mayest prosper and be in health as thy soul prosper. Your soul is prospering. He said they bring report that you live in the light. You walk in the light. You are walking in the light. Girls, why are you sick? You are walking in the light. Why is nothing working for you? They testify of your hospitality to the saints. That when they pass you, bless them. Say, girls, I pray. Ah, because I can see something is missing. In Job's life, it is just forgiving his friends who came at somebody losing his children. And you are not comforting. You are telling, I know. <laughs> I told you, you think you know so much. He's so dirty, you don't know anything. That's the way they were talking. And it was Peter. And for that, nothing worked in his life. He said, I will wait. He was waiting seven years. Job waited seven years with cancer on his body. Nothing worked until he prayed for his friends. That was what was lacking. And the prayer I pray for you now, is that anything that is lacking in your life that is not allowing your faith to work, God should step in and help you resolve it in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. E keriba katata, orobondo lobogo zika liba, ukayama andele kete. Ele mondo lobogo zufra kataya mande, uraba kataya baka sulo mokode. Ele kete te 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 bukwa takacha, ola baka yama andele kete. Orobondo lobogo zika tata, magali kachara baka zoko toro boko ze. Orobondo lobogo zika taya boko roboko zeya. Let me hear you pray. Male kataya mako zoko boko tu. Sometimes it's something very small, something very little. Male kataya mande. God will step in. He will let you see it. He will help you do it. Male kataya so that your joy will be full. Male kataya manda likobo. That He may perform that which He has promised in your life. Malakataya mako soko roboko tea. Kandele boko zikatata. Kaliba kasakataya. In Jesus' name we pray. Like we prayed the other time, that you will move forward in life. <clears throat> that you will advance. 
It's a relationship that should go to marriage, then you advance into the marriage. You don't just stay as relationship. If a student, you will graduate just to move forward. To move forward. To move forward. To go forward. He told Moses, go forward. Turn northward. Don't stay there for too long. You've been there long enough. Move forward. Let your life reflect progress. In the name of Jesus. Begin to pray for yourself that you move forward in life. Male kabusa kray kataya bakokode. Eliba taya mando lokosi brakata taya makadele. Kali vosuma kata taya kase. Kuramande le kebototo bakatusa makataya. Kolomondo lo bogo zeketete. Ibrakataya manga le bogo zikataya bogo zodo roboko ze. Kali bo sede. Kali mondo lo bogo zia. Koro bogo takaya mako zevre de kete. Olo bogo du makataya baka zelebre de ketusa vrakataya. Kande le bogo zufa katata. Kula mashi kataya. Hallelujah. Say after me, I move forward spiritually. I move forward emotionally. I move forward physically. I move forward materially in the mighty name of Jesus. And the last point, we prayed again the other time. Everything, you know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 or 2, it says that we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is of God, that we may know the things that have been freely given to us. There are so many things that are ours, but then the custody of tutors. Galatians 4, say the child, so long as he remains a child, is under the custody of tutors. And all his assets and inheritance are in the custody of, what do they call those people? That when they give will, they hold it in trust. Trustees, is it trustees? No administrator, so he can have access as he needs to the things that are his. And the administrators will administrate it and make themselves comfortable. Everything, you know, let me even say this. If you have anything to collect from the government, make sure you collect it in the next one month. Did you hear me? Anything that is yours, payment due, to collect from the government. <laughs> I've not said why, so there is no crime in this. Collect it within the next one month. Don't let it pass one month. If you have gone to and you are yet to collect it, don't return. Stay there, you will get it. Eh? That is voluminous, right? There's more spoken than is unspoken, right? Okay, so say after me, say every blessing, every blessing. that carries my name tag, my name. Wherever, it may be, wherever it may be, including the ones that has been assigned to me from those who refused to collect their own, in the north, in the south, in the east, in the west, wherever it may be, develop wings. Fly out of where you are. Come into my bands and serve me in the name of Jesus. If anything <coughs> tries to oppose you, let the angels of God rise and contend with that thing and ensure that all that is mine enters my hand in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Orobondo loboko zeketete bikataya, vrondo loboko zakari bakatata yamaka zondo, elima katata lima kasede, korobondo loboko si kataya mande, ebrede ke si vrokoto yamaka sele bokoto ya, akali makacha cha 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 cha, koya kacha cha 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 mo koko cha kacho kolobo kocha kacha cha, ekali bakacha ndele ke botolo. Kula manda li kataya. Kondo loboko zekede. Anga liboko zufra kataya mande. Kura ba kataya. Kondo loboko zekete. Krende le kabu zofro do kataya bakasande. Kali ba kataya boko koro boko sekete. 
In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. So, worship is expressed in about seven forms, which includes sharing the word. Now, if you want to worship God and you're sharing the seven dimensions of witchcraft, is that worship to God? But if, like you are talking about God and you are talking of him correctly, I said, do you know the great God Jehovah is the wise, good, true, magnificent, beautiful compassionate, merciful God. Now, you are worshiping him. Amen? Praise God. So a preaching can be worship and a preaching can be non-worship, depending on what you're saying. And that's why he says that grace and peace be multiplied unto you according to the knowledge of God. Amen? Is the yea and the amen. He is the hallelujah. He's the only true and the only wise God. The blessed potentate. Immortality. Invisible. With no beginning, no end. It says, the song says, um, you are, uh, there's a song that says, you, um, you are the beginning and the end. No, 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 it's not the beginning. There's no beginning. There is no end. It's infinite beyond infinite to go. No father, no mother. <laughs> it's a mystery. It's been existing for trillions upon trillions upon trillions upon trillions. Keep saying that trillion for a trillion years. Still before it. Awesome God. That's your God and my God. That's your father. And my father. Amen. amen. That's a good place to say amen. amen. Last week Sunday, um, we had we broke bread and released the blood of Jesus from the mercy seat of the Almighty, which can never dry, as a standby by us for any form of evil that may come anywhere near us as a protective shield and in the course of not knowing what to say to speak on our behalf better things than the blood of Abel. And um, I said there are all the means to, to keep yourself safe. To immune you from both death and calamities. Listen, calamities are befalling the earth. I, I was listening to um, a mountain, I'm trying to remember the country, less than two weeks ago, erupted. Over 20,000 had to be evacuated. Volcanic ash, is it, in the, is it in Latin America also? It's one disaster after the other. It seems they're just following each other. And going, and it's a shooting, and it's a killing, and it's headsmen kidnapping, and Boko Haram killing, and ISIS attacking, and uh, earthquakes somewhere, and the threat of war in, um, is it Tigray area with um, Ethiopia, and the threat of bomb of the, it's endless. It goes on and on and on and on. But you can be protected in Revelation 3.10. It says, I will keep you from the hour of temptation that shall come upon the whole earth. So there is no same place on the earth. <clears throat> One of the safest places on earth is, I think, is Hungary or so. Is it Hungary or Denmark? Where a gone loose man killed 70 youths while at a resort. It's one of the safest places on earth. Do you know that when the gone man had killed about 30, he called the police. Come and arrest me so I don't kill more. They didn't come and he continued killing <laughs> till they were 70. He called the police, stood for a while that would they show up so that they would stop me from killing. They did not show up so he continued till he killed 70. You, you've watched it before now. To show you that it is whom the Lord keeps that is safe. There is no safe place. Praise the Lord. 
But there is a way to be saved that God expressed to us in his word that you can be super saved from every single operation of the kingdom of darkness. Proverbs 29, 18. There are other safety measures like Noah's ark. That one saves you even from God's wrath himself. Noah's ark. Let me ask you one question. Noah's ark is an anointing. There's not an ark. Let me, even, let me do what Jesus did. Ask his disciples some questions. Let me ask you a few questions. Let me see whether <laughs> you are discreet and close to the kingdom or not. Now, what is Noah's ark? It's an anointing. How do you recognize it? How do you recognize the anointing? Because there are so many anointings, and not all of them are Noah's ark's anointing. There are anointings that even your goat is safe. Even the cockroach around your house is safe because of that anointing. Noah's ark didn't just save human beings, saved animals, saved birds, saved pets. While human beings were dying, he saved pets. That's how terrible and powerful Noah's ark is. That's how, that's, those are anointings that human beings will carry. And when they carry it, anything that identifies with that anointing, your pet will be saved from earthquake. <laughs> it will touch it. While human beings will die, you, your dogs will be safe because Noah's ark, even the snake hiding under your tree will be safe. All of them, anything around you will be safe. So how do you recognize Noah's ark? That's not what I'm preaching today. Just give you a mini exam. I'll give you a hint. You don't want to know about the Bible. Every question that goes out in the question is the answer. While God is speaking, you see that the, the answer is in the question. And the question is in the answer. And if you study the word very carefully and know about God, when he tells you and asks you a question, while asking the question, he has already told you the answer without realizing it. Only Noah knew the rain was coming. And only he had the answer to the rain. So Noah's ark is those who know what is coming and have the answer to what is coming. Very simple. Let's continue our message. <laughs> Proverbs 29, 18. I'll leave that deliberations for another day. Ask myself, how do God walk with those Christians who say if you wear trousers, you go to hell? The answer is he doesn't walk with them. He doesn't walk with them. He can't walk with them. He cannot walk. A man that asks a man, how do you feed 5,000 men beside women and children? And he gave an answer, and that uh, he can't work with such people. He can't. He says, "Can two work together?" I said, "They be agreed." Can you work with somebody who's thinking? The only thing is thinking. Maybe someone. There's some of you here. You have a very industrious and a very profit mindset. And then there's somebody. The only thing he thinks about is party and party and booze. And you can't work together. You can't. You can't live together. That's why he looks at us and says, oh, fools, slow of heart to believe. You can't pick this quickly. Calls them fools. Glory. <laughs> One came to my house, saw a cockroach. He said, ah, they may be from the village. I said, then a broom will kill them. I don't need to fast to kill a cockroach. I can use a broom and kill the cockroach. And I can use insecticide. So if it's a human being, it's unfortunate. It is ordinary broom that has killed it. <laughs> One came and a bird landed in his vineyard from the sky. And on the bed was a gold chain. I said, what did you do? He said, don't tell me you burned the gold chain. If you do, you are what the robot call a pioneer. Have you forgotten you have dominion over anything that flies? Say maybe that which you say, if they fly, you have dominion over them. So what do you do? You have two options. Kill the chicken, barbecue it, and eat it. There's nothing that enters a man that can defile it. If you are feeling you will be contaminated by it, remove the gold chain, throw the chicken away, sell the chain, sell the gold chain, and pay your debts. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. I say you threw the chain. I say you can't move them if you threw the chain away. I will banish you from my... You are, you, are, you are a carrier, a way of good tidings. Some of them. 
bread drop from sky and his wings are still there. It's God has brought me to your way. <laughs> what is in the Bible? He sent quails from the sea to the children of Israel. What's wrong with this generation? So in Proverbs 29, 18, <laughs> ah, like if a sudden fish appear and you call, I said, don't eat it first, open the belly. You can't say there might be gold there. At least that will take care of some bills. <laughs> Praise God. Where there is no vision, the people perish. <clears throat> or the people die. The people cast off strength. They lose hope. They are helpless. They die prematurely. They are destroyed through violence and crisis. They disappear and suffer ruin. Why? Because there is no vision. Wow. So a vision that is redemptive can save you from even Boko Haram itself. The word vision means a redemptive revelation, light of what is coming of the purpose of God in your life. So one way to keep yourself safe is to have light from God of what is coming your way and to embrace it. He says when that happens, you cannot perish because God is in partnership with you to bring that vision to pass. And so he has a duty to keep you until that vision comes to pass. I'll try and be as brief, and then we'll pray. We should be done on like maybe 30 minutes. We should be done. In 1 Peter chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 1, and I read verse 5. It says, we are kept, protected, preserved from darkness, from evil, from crisis, by the power of God through faith unto salvation that is going to be revealed later. So meaning, what God has revealed to you that is coming is capable of protecting you until its hour of manifestation. Let's look at an example. Luke chapter 2. You know, one of the things about God, many times, the Bible says that the wisdom of God is foolishness. To them that believe, it's like foolishness. It doesn't make sense. How can you be such an evil person committing atrocities, then you just stand and say, oh, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for all what I've done. Please forgive me. I believe God sent you into this world to suffer for my sake. You died, and on the cross you were buried the third day you were raised back to life. I embrace you as a son of God. Please come into my life. Forgive me all my sins. Make me a child of God. In Jesus. And all those sins are wiped out. Doesn't make sense. That's the way these two may not make sense. <laughs> in Luke chapter 2 from verse 25. There was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout. Waiting. For the consolation of Israel, he's waiting in anticipation of something coming. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. Once the word and the vision is before you, the Holy Ghost rests on you. That's what they told Mary. He said, the Holy Ghost will come upon you. He will be with you until this seed is made flesh. So once that vision comes, the Holy Ghost sits on you. Nothing can touch you, nothing. And they said in verse 26, it was revealed to him by the Holy Ghost that he cannot taste death until he has seen the vision come to pass. He cannot taste death. So there are people who have redemptive vision. They said to them, Boko Haram cannot touch you. 
Isis cannot touch you. Full and headsmen cannot touch you. Because the Holy Ghost is sitting on you. And the vision that is before you. Until it comes to pass. You are immune from all evil. I am Atari. They didn't say. He will not taste death. They said. They didn't say he, he should not taste death. Because. He's waiting for the consolation of Israel. So there is a vision. So he can't perish because there is a vision. Where there is no vision, the people will perish. But where there is a vision, they cannot perish. So English will tell you that if there is no vision, the people will perish. Then English tells you that if there is a vision, they will not perish. So because there is a vision, then they've told him, that very soon somebody is coming into the temple. He's the consolation of Israel. He's the Lamb of God that will take away the sins of the world. And because he's waiting for that consolation, they're immune from death. How? The Holy Ghost sat on top of him for that vision to come to pass. <clears throat> if we look back in Philippians, Apostle Paul said something in Philippians chapter 1. I think I'll read it. So we can have a true picture of what he was saying there. Philippians chapter 1, verse 26. Sorry, verse 21 to 26. Philippians chapter 1. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Listen to this. If I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I what not. For I'm in a strait between two, oh, two ends. Why are you in a strait? That means he's trying to choose whether to live or die. But he has a desire. Having a desire to die. He has a desire to die. But he can't die because there's a vision on his head. So even if he wants to die, he will not die. So it's not enough that you have the vision, you are protected. If you have the vision, even if you choose to die, you will not die. <laughs> Kaliva Saka, are you getting it? I desire to die, to depart, to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you having this confidence that I know that I shall abide and continue with you for all the furtherance and joy of faith, meaning all what Jesus has said I must accomplish. I have not finished it. So I will stay and finish it. Though I desire to die. In 2 Timothy 4, 7, when he had finished it and he had seen the vision come to pass, he says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my race with joy. Now, I'm ready to go. What happened? Until the vision came to pass, he couldn't go. Now that the vision has come to pass, it's not that he has to go. He wants to go. And he's allowed to go. That's why Simeon, when he saw Jesus in the temple, he said, now let thy servant Depart in peace, for my eyes have seen the consolation. He can't say that before he sees Jesus. If he says he will not go anywhere, if he jump over the cliff, he will be injured, he will not die. It's power to keep Kalava, to keep a man. Just keep him there. You're going nowhere. <laughs> it's called the power of God through faith. In the life of Jesus, Let's look at another example. John 17. Am I communicating? Doesn't look like it. Maybe we should just pray that, um, let's just pray that, Lord, let's have a nice time and then go to the house, right? In John 17, verse 4 to 5, Jesus prayed and said, you know, before now, they were taken to the edge of the cliff. They try and push him. What happens? He walks through their midst. You know why he walks through their midst? He has not finished the vision. The vision, he's still going to the cross. 
So until he finishes from that cross, you can't kill him. Nobody can. So they will take him to, they want to throw him crisis. Where he just walks. That's why you see, if Bokoro had division, say, you walk away, you even touch the head. Uh, Bokoro, shake, uh, shake around, see you. And <laughs> you walk out. Shake around, he say, eh, hey, say, I'll see you. And <laughs> you walk away. There's nothing he can do, he will look helpless. Now, they tried to stone him at one time. He walked their way through their means. So, it's not the first time he's escaping death. He's been escaping death. But look at what he said in John 17, verse 4 to 5. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify thou me with thy own self with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Then, if you move to John 19. John 19, I'll read from verse 28. This is Jesus saying, After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now there was a set of vessels full of vinegar, they filled with a sponge with vinegar. Listen, they are pierced his side, all blood had poured out, he didn't die. They had nailed him to the cross without anesthesia, he didn't die. But he now said, and filled with the sponge of vinegar, they put it, up, uh, up, put it upon his up and put it to his mouth. And when Jesus therefore received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost, seeing all scriptures now fulfilled. Then he can die. The vision has finished and has been accomplished. What's the next thing? He died. But before then, he couldn't die. So you want to leave, have a vision from God. When you have it, sleep, you will leave. Did you hear me? The power of God will keep you. <clears throat> I'm going to round up quickly. In the book of Habakkuk, the book of Habakkuk is in the Old Testament. Chapter 1, and I read from verse 1, long reading. The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. O Lord, how long shall I cry that I will not hear? It will cry out unto thee of violence, and you will not save. So there is violence. Why do you show me iniquity? Why do you cause me to behold grievances? Spoiling and violence are before me, and there are those that rise up strife and contention. Headsmen are moving everywhere. Lord, why are you letting me see headsmen all over the place? Therefore, the law is slacked. It's not to put faith in the law. The law can't save any man from the temptation and the crisis and the darkness that is coming upon the earth. The law is slack to hold him. <laughs> judgment never goes forth. The wicked compass are about the righteous. Therefore, wrong judgment proceedeth. Behold ye among the Hebrew heathen, and regard and wonder marvelously. Now, that's Habakkuk talking, having a conversation with God. That look, God, things are going out of, out of order. And why are these people getting stronger and stronger, and we are getting weaker? What's the problem? And God spoke to him and said, verse 5, Behold, ye among the heathen, regard and wonder marvelously. I will walk a walk in your days. You will not believe, though it be told you. Now, what's the walk? I'm going to raise full and hate men. That bitter and hasty nation. They will march through the breadth of the land. They will possess dwelling places that is not theirs. They are terrible. They are dreadful. Their judgment, their dignity proceeds of themselves. Their weapons are swifter than leopards. They are more fierce than the evening wolves. Their horsemen spread themselves. The horsemen come from far. They fly as the eagle that are hasting to eat. They will come only for violence. Their face is shot up in the east wind. They shall gather the captivity as the sun. They shall scoff at kings and princes shall be scorned unto them. They will deride every stronghold. They will heap dust and take it. Then shall he change his mind. He shall pass over and offend impunity to his power and say this is because it's of his jihad that that's why he's conquering. He will attribute his victory to his jihad and to his God. <laughs> ah, Abakok said, verse 12, it can't happen. Are you not from everlasting, O oh Lord, my God? Ah, uh, ah, uh, the Holy One. We won't die. Oh. 
Lord, you ordain them for judgment. Almighty God, you establish them for correction and judgment. You are of pure eyes to behold such evil. You know, he's toasting God now. He's toasting his God and his creation, having a conversation. One is telling, God is telling his creation, the objectivity of what's on ground. The other, the creation is toasting God. Your eyes are too pure to behold such kind of evil. You cannot look on iniquity. How can you look upon these people that deal treacherously? Hold thy tongue when the wicked devour the man that is more righteous than he. You make men as fishes on the sea, creeping things, and the conversation went on. Habakkuk chapter 2. I read from verse 1 to 4. The conversation is God. You mean you will watch this demon infested people wreak havoc in the land and vanquish innocent people, righteous, more righteous than them? Now, this is what God said in Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4. <coughs> in verse 1, Habakkuk said, I will stand my watch. Set me upon the tower. I watch to see what God will say to me and what answer when I'm reproved. Verse 2, the Lord answered me and said, Habakkuk, write the vision I gave you. Make it so plain on tables that even when you are running, it's before your eyes. Though the vision I gave you is for an appointed time, but at the end, it will come to pass. It will never fail. Do it, tarry, Habakkuk. Wait for it because it will come to pass. And verse 4. Behold, his soul which is lifted is not upright in him. But you live by this faith when they come. Keep yourself safe. By this faith. How? What we told you that will happen years back. Now go and bring it out. Make it so plain that let it consume you. And I understand. When in Isaiah 60 it says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come. When they say light, it's a manifestation of God's glory, which is God's word. For thy light is come. Meaning, Arise, shine. You know, it's arising in the midst of gross darkness. Arise means lift your head to the light that was shown you years back. For it's about to happen. Though you are in the midst of gross darkness, if your eyes can be on that light, you will shine in the midst of chaos and disaster. Then I understand in Luke 21 also, when he spoke to the disciples. Luke 21 from verse 5. He says, there shall be false Christ, earthquakes, and pestilences in diverse places. He said, when you see all this evil happening, lift up your head. He said, man's heart will fail for seeing these things. Meaning, if your eyes are on the headsmen, Chaldeans, Kidnappers. He said, you have cardiac arrest. He said, men's heart will fail for seeing this thing. He said, but you lift up your head. Now, in that Luke 21, lift up your head. For what? For your redemption. It is he has come. Draw it near. What's the redemption? It's the vision. It's approaching. So, meaning, lift up your head and face the vision. It will keep you from the pestilence, earthquakes, Famines protect you. But if you take your eyes off that light and focus it on Tinubu, Buari, Atiku, Obasanjo, say you have cardiac arrest. But if what I told you if at that time, that's your focus, there is nothing they can bring your way. They are called Chaldeans. 
He says it's a bitter and a hasty nation. Habakkuk said nobody survives them. He said you live by that faith. So that when they come and they are gone, you will be standing. And you will be standing when the vision will come to pass. Because it's still going to happen, though it is stirring. That vision is going to happen. But for you to be alive when it's happening, write the vision down. Such that even when you're on speed, then how do you write something that on speed? You can write a whole vision. You, have you seen vision? Our vision here in this ministry is to make sure that we take everybody to heaven and lift them up into paradise. Abby, that's about four lines. On speed, you must be able to read it completely. Meaning it's big. In Deuteronomy, he said, write it upon the doorpost of your house. Write it on the tablet of your heart. Write it at your door. Write it in your room. Write it everywhere. Meaning, the only thing you are talking about is the new Nigeria. Every day God showed me the new Nigeria. That's what you are talking about. What God showed you, what God revealed to you. He said, if you are, I say, yes, men will not touch you. They cannot touch you. Because the Holy Ghost will sit on you. To make sure that vision comes to pass. And when it sits on you, they immune you from death and pestilences and evil. What a fantastic way to be saved. <coughs> the word lift up your head means like Habakkuk. Stops in the track of the Chaldeans. See what the vision says is coming. What I said is going to happen. What will happen in your life that I showed you? The son you will give birth to. The ministry you will accomplish for the Lord. The things you will do. The things that the father will do through you. That I showed you. Say, so lift up your head. And let them be below the frontlets of your eyes. Write them upon the tablets of your heart. Say them in the morning. Say them in the evening. Say them in the noon. I heard they kidnapped 30 students. Hey, God will deliver us from these kidnappers. Eh? But, God, but by next year, I would have had my son. By the grace of God, they would have passed then. You see how you mix everything? <laughs> have you heard? They are born in houses. I like God along. The son God gave me. He my busy one. He born in the Jesu. Do you see what you are mixing up? Your head is lifted up high. Even if they come to, they will pass it. You, see? you know, you know, it's an angel of death walking with men. Once the angel passes, the man passes. When the angel stays, the man stays. He can't walk beyond the angel that is walking with him. And he said, "When I see the blood, I will pass over." When he passes over, the man coming to burn the house must pass over. We'll pray one or two prayer points that will close. I told you it's going to be short. Yes, this is not a long story, right? This is not a long story. In Psalm 119, I want to pray now. I'm, I'm done with the message. Surprisingly, I don't, I, I, I'm 